<laughs> Today we have updates about the Enchanted Princess, some exciting new news from Princess regarding menus, and then um, internet costs are going to be changing on some cruises, as well as I'm going to let you know what it was like, uh, our trip to land here in London, and then the traveling around that we have done. Uh, we got here on Saturday afternoon, about one o'clock in the afternoon, and I'll bring you up to date with what we have been doing. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips and today is Monday. It is October 2nd of 2023. And first off, I would like to invite you to please subscribe to our channel. And if you appreciate our updates, please give this video a thumbs up. We really need to have you all here with us. We share a lot of information between all of us and we're not complete until you're with us. So we'd love to have you. Now, first of all, I wanna let you know a couple of things. I'm going to give you some cruise news like I always like to do, and then I will let you know how things are going on our trip. And I really like to share it because we are traveling before we embark on the beautiful Island Princess on Wednesday, October 4th. And so I want to kind of give you an idea of some of the things that you can do when you travel before you go on a cruise, some options that are out there. And I know lots of you have more options. So put them in the comments, anything that you would like to share, because we will look forward to hearing. So first of all, Princess has really excitedly announced that they are going to start offering a vegan menu on board their ships. Now here's some fun trivia for you today. How many ships does Princess have? Do you know how many ships are in the Princess fleet without looking? Well, um, there are 15 and the vegan menus are going to roll out on all of the princess ships. It does not, they have not announced a date for that yet, but they said that the vegan menu options will be available on all of her ships, which I think is excellent. I think that's a huge step forward in dining on cruise lines. There's a lot of people that choose to eat vegan menus and vegan food and um, appreciate those vegan menus. And also some people that are actually required for their health to do that. And so let me tell you in their press release, they gave some of the fun options. It says that they're going to offer, one of the items is roasted pears garnished with uh, dried, dried apricots and pistachios. They're going to have a Baja style cauliflower tacos, a green goddess salad with tofu. I remember back in the 70s, the green goddess dressing was a really big deal and it was delicious, um, creamy, white bean soup or a hearty roasted eggplant and tomato soup, black beans on toast topped with tomato and avocado, and a fresh potato salad with Dijon mustard herbs, and um, lots of other um, tasty options it says. So they're going to have um, your starters, your appetizers, your soups, your salads, and your main courses. I don't know if they're going to have vegan desserts or not, but I would think that they would if they're going to the trouble to develop the menus for all of the other courses of your dinner. So we will look forward to giving those a try and letting you know. Um, like I said, we'll be on the Island Princess and I will let you know if we notice any vegan options. Now, this is a, another thing that I think we really can come together on um, to kind of help us all stay up to date with how things are going with Alfredo's. In the comments, one of our Let's Go family members mentioned that uh, they, they have noticed on some other Facebook groups that people have been posting pictures of Alfredo's, that dining location on Princess, some of the Princess ships, it's not on all of them. But anyway, noting that it is often more empty at lunchtime. Alfredo's used to be hopping, a really popular place, but then it became part of what Princess was offering as part of their casual dining. So you either get two of those during the course of a cruise if you've got the plus package, or unlimited if you have the premier package, but if not, or you want more than those two on your plus package, you have to pay $14.99 per person every time that you eat there. So it sounds like it is slowing things down a little bit. I know that um, it'll be interesting to see how this works because initially, you know, with it being an included dining location, it was an excellent option of places to go to if the dining room was extra busy at dinner or even at lunchtime sometimes, but it gave you some other options and took a little bit of the pressure off of the main dining room and some of the other places that people like to dine there included. 
but since it's really not, it's not included anymore, it'll be interesting to see if that main dining room is more busy. Um, let me know if you notice any trends while you're on a cruise ship. We gather a lot of information from people who are on cruise ships, so share anything that you would like to share. We'd be delighted to hear from you in the comments or send me an email, let's go travel tips at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you and share it with the rest of the Let's Go family. Now, the next thing I wanted to tell you about is the Enchanted Princess. The Enchanted Princess was trying to sail September 30th, which was Saturday, out of Barcelona and ended up being delayed for 10 hours. The captain said they were having some thruster problems, a thruster there on the ship, and fortunately, a dive team was able to repair that and they were be able to get underway 10 hours later. The good news in all of that would be that the very first port stop that the Enchanted Princess has on that cruise was Gibraltar, and they are only going to be one hour late. So it sounds like they everything was working fine and they were able to make up the time. So if you happen to be on the Enchanted Princess, let us all know how it's going. Um, when we go on the Island Princess, our first day is a sea day, and then we call in Stavanger, Norway which segues me to the next <laughs> story that I wanted to let you know about. You know, we hear constantly about ports that want people to come and visit, cruise passengers to come, and then some not so much anymore. And it's really interesting to me because it seems like this rotating thing that, you know, you hear of ones that don't want them, but at the same time, you hear of others that are thrilled to have them come. Well, Stavanger, Norway is one of them that has been in the news lately of not wanting cruise passengers to come there so much anymore. So in 2018, Gordon and I went on the Sapphire Princess, and one of our stops was in Stavanger, Norway, and we were on the Midnight Sun cruise at that time. It was two weeks um, basically very similar, different, but similar to the itinerary that we have this time on the Island Princess, but it was at the end of June. So we went so that we could see the midnight sun, whereas this time we are going to go and hopefully catch sight of the Northern Lights. Well, Stavanger, Norway has a lot of people that live there that, um, aren't nuts about uh, the cruise ships coming. And they, I think, probably need to work with their town leaders there to find a better way. But sometimes they hang up sheets in their garden so that people can't see their flowers. And you should know that right where the cruise ships park, like right where they dock there, um, I remember getting off and people, um, you know, there's some residential streets there very close to the port and people have beautiful, beautiful flowers. But I think that one of the ways that they are saying that we don't want you to come is here and there, there are people that will hang up sheets so that you can't see their beautiful flowers. And um, sometimes they hold up signs that aren't nice. I would be really interested to know overall, um, along with the other stories. So when I saw the first story, I did more research. And it's really interesting that it seems like there is also a couple of activist groups that don't like cruise ships anywhere in the world that go to some of these places and do a lot of um, activism things there as well. So I guess we will wait and see how much longer Stavanger allows cruise ships to come. They did um, point out that once St. Petersburg got taken off our itineraries with the situation there with the war um, that Russia started on Ukraine, um, that a lot more cruise ships have added Stavanger as a cruise port. So wanted to bring you up to date on that. The other thing that we need to talk about is internet cost. So Carnival Cruise Line has announced that they are going to increase the cost for internet on their cruises in Australia. And so if you already have your Carnival Cruise booked um, out of Australia, or if you book it by October 14th, then you can have the current price. Um, you need to book it by then and get your internet locked in. If you don't, then you're going to have to pay their new price. They have not said yet how much it's going to go up, but they have said that the cost on those Australian cruises will go up. Now, if you are not familiar with Carnival, I thought I would tell you really quick, which is, I really find it so very interesting, the different pricing and the different usage structures that the different cruise lines have. So on Carnival, they have social value and uh, premium is the other one. So the social package costs $12.75 a day, the value package costs $17 a day, and the premium co package costs $18.70 a day. So you can see that there's quite a difference. So from that $12.75 uh, a day to that $18.70, that's almost $6. It's $5.95 a day different 
that you're going to be paying for your Wi-Fi. The interesting thing is though, with that social package, you just literally get to access, um, like, you know, your Facebook, your Instagram, your social media sites. You don't do your email, you don't do other apps. You really just do the social media type things. If you do that value package, then you can do your email, um, of course, still your social media sites, but then you can other do other general websites, but you can't, um, which they did include banking. You can do banking. So basically your other website things you want to do, web pages, but then you cannot stream videos. It is not until you hit that premium package, which is your $18.70 a day, that you're going to be able to do all of the things that the other packages can do, but then you can also stream any videos that you want to do. So it makes Princesses um, $15 a day for a device sound like an even better deal. So I um, wanted to bring you up to date on that. So if you're looking to go to Australia on, Prince, on the Carnival, go ahead and book it soon if you're gonna do that and get your Wi-Fi locked in, alrighty? Now, um, that's what I have for you for cruise news today. I would love to hear from any of you on a cruise ship. Let me know how it's going. Um, I love to hear about everything and share it with all of you. Now, um, we flew out, our flight from Salt Lake went at 9 p.m. on Friday night and we ended up landing at Heathrow at 1 a.m. Sorry, 1 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, Gordon and I, they always, when you get on those um, overnight flights, well, not even overnight, when you get on those, um, International flights, you get on. Um, as soon as they, it's safe for the flight attendants to move around the cabin, they serve you a nice dinner. Then they turn the lights down, have everybody shut their window shades so that people can go to sleep that want to. So we were luckily able to sleep quite a bit um, between. So we landed, like I said, at about one o'clock. And a couple of things to note there, when you land at Heathrow, if you're coming um, from the United States, and I think it would apply internationally also for other people coming. Uh, first of all, Customs was so very smooth. They have the facial recognition. You can go up to an actual agent if you want to. So I asked if I could do that so I could have a stamp on my passport. I do love stamps in my passport. Got the nicest agent there, but he said, coming from the United States, we don't stamp your passport. So I didn't get a stamp. But he was very nice. But the line was moving super fast, whether you were in line for the facial recognition or if you asked <laughs> to speak to an agent, um, both of them went really quickly and then you went and collected your luggage. And if you didn't have anything to declare for customs, you could just walk right out. So we walked right out and a couple of things to know, I took a couple of pictures for you. When you get out of, come through customs there, there are signs very clearly marking anything that you need. So if you're going to go on the Heathrow Express, there's a sign for that, for the train, for the, um, for buses, for all of that kind of transportation, there are signs for that. We were renting a car. There was a sign for where to go to get your car rental. Um, there you have to catch a, um, a shuttle to take you off um, over to where the Hertz car rental place is. I do want to tell you though, and Gordon's going to tuck in this video, it turned out a little funnier than I meant to. But when we got out to the car rental place, I did a quick video to show you a couple of things because when right when you come out um, from customs there and you've got your luggage over to the left hand side is just a little shop and they have food items, things that you can try. They've got candy. Uh, the fun thing this time of year, they had advent calendars. And so in my little video, I showed you a few things I got there. Um, I like to start off getting a little bit of the local culture going right away with what I'm eating and to try a few things so that um, we know what we like. And so I did that. So that video will be at the end as well. But um, anyway, so we got out to the car rental place and it is supposed to be in a perfect world that if you are a gold member, your name is just supposed to be on the screen that they have that is showing in my video there and you can just go right to your car. But for whatever reason, ours was not on that list even though Gordon's a gold member. So you have to go in, make sure that right when you go in, you take a number because that's how they call you up to wait on you. And it took us over an hour to get our rental car. Rental car. It was quite a wait. But finally we got our car, which is a Volkswagen, and off we went. We stayed the night at an Ibis in Bridgewater, England. The reason that we went there is because there were a few sites that I wanted to see there, and I was optimistic. I thought, well, if we're not too tired, well, we will go there on Saturday. But we were tired. We were a little bit later than we thought we would be since the rental car took a while to get. And so we just ended up going straight to our hotel and we um, got some work done, some things that we needed to do and went right to bed. 
the next morning, and by the way, you know what? This is the first time, very first time, and I have stayed in a lot of IBIS hotels around Europe, a lot, and the United Kingdom, and this is the first time I'm gonna ever say, don't stay at that Bridgewater IBIS, just pick another hotel, okay? Um, it just was not clean. I did a quick video um, that um, you can just kind of see the layout of the room and everything, but it wasn't as clean as we'd hoped. So it was okay for a night but um, I would not go there again, so I'll tell you that. Now, the next morning though, we got up and off we went to the Jurassic Coast. If you're not familiar with the Jurassic Coast of England, look it up. We stayed and went down there just very specifically for that. They, did, they have a place there in Lyme Regis, and I've got footage here of the beach for you that Gordon will put on after, but you can walk down um, and just, like there's a lot of really big rocks, there's some sand, there's a sand area further down, like right in front of Lime Regis, but then um, as you're facing the ocean from Lime Regis, you go to the right would be like the beach area and everything, and down, I'm sorry, to the left would be the beach area, and to the right is where um, all of the fossils are. For the most part, there are cliffs there, that is the cliffs come down, fossils come out of the cliffs, and then also fossils are washed up on the beach there. It really takes an eagle eye to find them. I did find some fossils though, I am really tickled pink, but just so that you know, you want to take a look if you go there at the tide tables. When the tide is out, it goes really far out there. It is very, very much a low tide and it uncovers all of these amazing, um, so it is so beautiful to see. Um, you get the plant life that is generally under the water there. You also get these um, like slabs, like they call it pavement there. Um, they call it the, the ammonite pavement because they have um, part of the pavement there. You can see the whole ammonite in it. The um, Like when you think of a snail, kind of look at the fossils, look that up, but um, you can see it there. And I very much wanted to see it. And you have to walk a long ways down to do that. And you can't walk, I don't really don't think you can walk far enough down to do it when the tide is in. So when I was there and um, Gordon ended up waiting for me, I walked clear down, but it was when the tide was out. And like I said, I don't think you can do it when the tide's not out. But it was absolutely spectacular. Bring shoes that um, are grippy because um, the rocks are slippery and then once the tide is out, it is um, slippery on the pavement and on the sand, the rocks and everything. But it is really an amazing experience to go see that. Um, if you want to know some wonderful books to read about that, re just Google Mary Anning, A-N-N-I-N-G, and um, that'll just take you off on this. Um, I could even, I'll link a couple of my favorite books. I even have some favorite children's books all about her and what she did. And I will link those underneath this video for you because it's remarkable. And she was back in the 1800s when they first realized that there were fossils there. She realized what they were and um, what an amazing lady and really what a thing it set off on people visiting the Jurassic Coast there. It was really fun. Lots of people come to see it. There was a gentleman and he had um, an accent. I'm not sure where he was from, but somewhere in Europe. And as I was walking back, um, he stopped me partway along the way and said, did you see the pavement? And so I was like, yes, it's a ways down there um, and watch the tide. But I was so excited and he was really excited too. And he got his family and off they went. So if you are interested in fossils and beautiful things like that, you might want to take a look at that. So we enjoyed that. Then we went over in the little town area there and got some fish and chips, of course, and some ice cream. And um, then we took off and went and saw some National Trust places. On Sundays, things close a little bit earlier um, everywhere here in uh, the United Kingdom as they do in a lot of places. And so we just drove around, we um, found some churches and went. And one lovely thing here is that you come to a beautiful church, it's old, you go in, it's clear they're still using it. Um, they've got a beautiful um, graveyard around it. So we thoroughly enjoyed our afternoon doing that. When we were down in Lyme Regis and seeing the Jurassic Coast there and everything along, it was very foggy and overcast. But then in the afternoon, uh, the sun came out and we really enjoyed um, seeing the countryside. So I've got video for you of us just driving down the road so that you can see what it looks like and in the churches, just the places. Um, I tried to remember the video as much as I could. Um, every once in a while, I'm just, um, 
I get so excited, I forget. But I hope that it will help you when you think about some places that you might like to go see. If you are coming into Southampton to go on a cruise and you've never been to London, I would say do London first because London, um, if you need suggestions on what to do in London, tell me and I could talk to you about that. But there is so much to see there. And then once you have seen that and would like to go further afield, um, there is so much more to see. And you can even, if you don't wanna rent a car, they've got great trains here. There are lots of ways to do it. But this time to do everything we wanted, we rented a car. We've rented a car before. But um, if, you, if, you, if you have questions about that, let us know. In the United Kingdom, you do not have to have an international driver's license. Your United States driver's license works just fine. You just have to remember to stay on the left-hand side. On the left, on the left, on the left is the key there. All right, so here's where you come out from customs. You just curve around. Thought it would be fun to show you that right here is the Viking. Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. I'm just here waiting outside of the Hertz Car Rental Place. And when you first get here, you can um, see if your name is on the, uh, the screen right there, if you're a Volt member. And if you're not, then you have to go inside the building. So the inside of the building is just right there. But I thought it would be fun to show you some of the things I already got. So right when you come out of customs, there's a little shop and we were just hungry. So I got Peno Chocolat from Alaska, so wild. And then they also have a little bakery section. And you know what, they do things with raisins here in the United Kingdom that everyone else just dreams about. So here's my raisin. And then they have these cute, they have so many different advent calendars to choose from. So I got the Spencer Bear. We have a son named Spencer, so I had to get one of those. And then, um, sorry, I also got, they have these little cronuts that are maple and pecan. So I got one of those. That looks delicious just for kids to try. And then I had never had this before. So two vanilla slices. It says, it's like pump pastry packed with creamy custard, made with British cream topped with smooth fondant icing. So we're gonna give those a whirl. I always think you should try a lot of things right off so you can find what you really like. So just wanted to share it with you and say, hey, we'll talk to you again soon. I will be talking to you again soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye. Okay, we finally, after an hour and a half, got our car here at the Hertz Car Rental Place. We are in the car. Do you want to see anything here?
first park turn right onto ozone terrace then turn right Park 100 yards that way. Oh, look, there's a deli welly. A deli welly. Turn right, then turn left. That's Black the name Kelly's bath. Ice Cream. The wet fish shop. Fresh shop. Local wet fish. Well, this is splendid. Mm -hmm. So turn right. And then what? It just says car park 100 yards. Um, Isn't this fascinating? Oh, I got a little shell. Oh, and here's another one. Oh, that one has its little owner in it. I don't know if this one does. I don't think so. go up. Let's see. Here's the cliffs. All right. Maybe, hopefully, there's some ammonites. Maybe the pavement's over there. Let's go see.
little more. Well, let's keep looking. I mean, that looks pretty good. And
This is the Lowood Church. Go in. I don't know. Let's go see. memory of Reverend, uh, Reverend Isaac and wow It's amazing. It's to be steps down from the road. Oh yeah, put in something. Mm -hmm. that tree.
or shut here. to Barrington Court. Where? Oh, over there. Thursday to Monday. It's okay, Gordon. We're just we're here too late. No, it's all right. You can see the map. Yep. Yeah, the house is over there. Well, we'll Here, I'll video right now. Then you can always. Oh, they have a second hand book place and everything. beautiful gates.
I really appreciate you all coming along with me. If you've got questions about any of this, put it in the comments and I'll look forward to reading your comments as well, sharing any experiences that you would like to share. And I will be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.